Welcome to this edition of the Angels and Destiny show. Why is this show called This You May Ask? So I'll tell you. The accept mean of angel is messenger and the accept mean of destiny is to make firm establish. So my guests and I bring you messages to establish what you need to know in the present. And of course, I like working with angels and the calmness they bring. Now, in a moment, I will introduce you to my wonderful guest, April Marie. But before that, I'd like to say thank you so much for watching the show live at a later date, as it really does mean a lot to us to connect to like-minded people. Now, if you've never met me before, then my name is Ray, and I'm a guide who helps you remember your divine presence so that you can heal your past, create your future, and transform your present to expand your consciousness, understand your spiritual path, and take charge of your destiny so that you can spread your wings and soar. I'm the founder of Radiant Angel Energy and through Divine Presence, Virtual and Actual Retreats, Transformational Packages, a six-week guided meditation series for confidence, workshops and so much more. I help you remember why you are here, your spiritual path and the clarity of the next steps to take. Now, each episode of this show covers various themes for your journey, a mini guided meditation or angel oracle card reading with the wisdom of my wonderful guests like today's guest, April Marie, about building permanent self-esteem. Now, April is a professional mental health and substance abuse counsellor, a certified advanced alcohol addictions counsellor through MacBab of Michigan. April has spent a total of 22 years studying and obtaining new degrees and certificates in the mental health, substance abuse, healing and spirituality domains. A few of these certifications include being a two times over Reiki Energy Healing Master, an AMDS Energy Healer, a certified hypnotherapist, a Pathflies Regression Therapist, a certified auricular acupuncturist and a clairvoyant psychic medium. Now, April has made it her life's mission to help as many people as she can to develop its permanent self-esteem and inner peace through awareness, teaching people that they have an innate worth, value and purpose in this life. April has the gift of being a psychic medium, where she gets the privilege to heal many souls, guide people in their lives and connect them to loved ones on the other side. Now, everything she does is intended to heal and spread love and light in the world. April has created courses to teach permanent self-esteem and inner peace, as well as a tarot card mastery and developing psychic ability course. April also serves on a weekly Eckhart Tolle spiritual panel and has been a guest on many webinars, masterminds and podcasts, all with the intent to help heal as many souls as she can in one lifetime. So she's taken, decided to take on a lot in this lifetime. So without further delay, hello April and welcome to the Angels and Destiny show. How are you today? Hello, I am good. Thank you for having me. I'm excited. Excellent. So before we get into this fascinating conversation, I want to remind you that not only can you share this video, but you can also ask questions, leave comments and thoughts, as both April and I want you to be want you to be part of this conversation. So please don't be shy. So April, why don't you tell us more about your journey and how we can learn to develop uh, permanent self-esteem and inner peace? So my life, my journey, uh literally started from day one. I, my parents were teenage parents. So they were young, they didn't really know how to be parents. And they themselves had difficult upbringings. And when we come from those environments where upbringing is different, and it is uh, difficult, not necessarily fully nurturing, then we end up with self-esteem issues. We end up with struggles, uh, low confidence. Well, being a parent and having those issues, you know, doesn't make it the prime situation to be raising children, right? Um, you know, my parents loved me, but they had their own issues. And that got spread to me and my brother. And from a very young age, while I was in this environment, these things were happening, going on around me. There was a lot of anger. There was just, you know, a lot of these things going on. I always kind of had this sense that it was wrong. Like, this is just not the way it's supposed to be. And I always had an ex extreme amount of empathy. Even as a little child, I could feel what other people were feeling. I, I could kind of know. So what happened was because of that environment and growing up in that way, I ended up 
being a teenage mom. So I had my first child at 16 and I had my second child four days before I turned 17. Wow. So I had two children at 16. I was forced to get married literally at 15. And when I had my first two children, that is truly when my mission started. I decided then that I was going to fix myself so that I could save my children from living the life I lived. That was my goal. Yeah. Now that was a process. It didn't happen right away and I didn't necessarily save my children, <laughs> uh, but it just started me on this path of self healing and growth. And at first I thought that the answer was I needed to go to school. I needed to get an education. That's what I, at first, that's what I thought my answer was. So, you know, I ended up taking myself back to high school and then I went, started going to college. And then, um, about 12 years after that marriage, I finally got strong enough to get a divorce. And that marriage was extremely abusive. Just whatever kinds of abuse you could think of, it was there. And when I finally got strong enough to leave him, my mission was to have internal peace. I wanted internal peace because I had lived so much abuse up until that point. So that's what really started my spiritual journey. And it started out with, I decided to become a massage therapist. Um, one of the abuses that I had was I was forced to rub his back every night. So I got to the point where I could do it with my eyes closed. So I was really good at it. <laughs> so then I thought, well, I should make money at it, right? Yeah. But really what that did was it led me into Reiki and energy healing, that massage therapy world. It really opened the spiritual world. Um, and my mother actually was always in, she was into everything, all the spiritual stuff. She would take me to psychic fairs and the readers would tell me that I was supposed to be reading them. And I was like, what, you know? But because of my desire to have that internal peace, that's what really pushed me. And I just kept taking course after course after course and listening and reading and just trying to learn what was internal peace. And all of these things were, were great. Like Reiki was awesome. That was, you know, awesome. And it brought me into the energy world and into being able to heal others and heal myself. But I didn't have internal peace. I still didn't have that internal peace. So what I discovered was I didn't have the internal peace because I didn't have any self-esteem. I didn't love myself. I didn't believe in myself. I didn't love myself. I didn't value myself. And it's because of all the things that had happened in my life where, you know, we weren't allowed to speak up. You weren't allowed to have a voice. Uh, you were, you know, you're trapped as a child. You're trapped in an environment. You can't get out. And these parents, they, they're our parents. And we are so little that we take whatever they tell us, whatever they do, and we believe it. Yeah. And we believe those messages that we get about ourselves that, you know, maybe I'm not smart or I'm not good enough or, you know, that I'm stupid or that I'm, you know, whatever the message is. And those become our truth. Yeah. Right. So what I started to do was to dig in more to what were those beliefs that I got? How did I get those beliefs? What are they? And I realized that there is a specific memory when I was about five, my mother had taken me to my grandmother's house and I didn't go in the house that day. I was upset. I don't know what I was upset about. I'm sitting out on the porch and I'm crying and I'm saying to myself that nobody loves me. 
and this is at five, right? Yeah. I'm five. Nobody loves me. And my mother yells out the window, shut up, April, and knock it off. Right? Yeah. So that was another message of whatever you're feeling is not real. It's not true. Just knock it off, you know. Um, so that message, usually what I find with people is that the messages are now we have from zero to eight, or zero to seven where the child's brain is in theta state and everything that's happening is getting programmed into the child. But as a, I've been doing professional counseling for 16 years now, most people, those messages are programmed by the age of five. By the age of five, those messages are there and they're now not messages, they're beliefs. Okay. They have become truth. So we get this message and then what we do is we go out into the world and we try it out. So like in school. So I had this belief that, you know, nobody loves me, nobody likes me. So I then go to school and I start to look for where people don't like me, where they don't love me. And of course, because I'm looking for it, I find it. Yeah. And then it becomes a truth. Then it's like, oh, that, look, those kids over there didn't include me. That's because nobody likes me, right? The teacher didn't call on me. That's because I'm not important. So we start to make these beliefs true. That is a phenomenon that I have, literally, I have had people who are 60. I've had people who are 70. That belief is still following them. It's phenomenal. That you make this decision three, four, five years old with that little child's mind, and that follows you forever. Wow. So what I did was I started looking into, okay, what were all my beliefs? Were they actually true? And they're not true. But because the child is little and because these parents are so big, whether it's your parents or it's your caretaker or it's your grandma, doesn't matter. Whoever it is that raised you, you don't know any better. You don't. So the child's mind, the issue that I found with the child's mind is the child, everything gets turned inwards for the child. As an adult, you can look outwards. Mm -hmm. You can grasp the whole context. As a child, you can't do that. It all gets turned inward. And it all becomes, well, I must not be good enough. Yeah. I must not be fast enough. It must be me. That's the problem. It's me. So that child then takes that. Literally, I've had people, the oldest person I've ever seen is 67 or 76. Wow. That's the oldest person I've ever had. Um, still having these false beliefs. So you have to go back and you have to look at the original belief and say, the five-year-old child sitting on the steps, is it actually true that you're not lovable? Is that actually true? It's not, right? Yeah. So you have to first look at the what messages you got. So I have people run through different areas of their life. So for example, some of the areas are one is your parents or your caretaker. That's the most important one. The next area would be um, your friends. And then another area would be like your school. How, what message did you get from school? What message did you get from your friends? And it can go on such as like, you know, it means something to live in an area where you know, like where I live, there is horses across the street, there's chickens next to me, or living in the city, like yeah. deep, deep. It means something. It's so it can go to that too. But the primary ones is your parents, your family, your friends, and your school. Yeah. So then if you run through that and you look at what are the messages that you got, what you usually will find is a theme. 
there'll be a theme of not being worthy, not being important, not being lovable. You'll find a theme. So then what I do is I take people into that and then I have them create the opposite message. And I literally did that with myself. I went in, I found the messages, I found the theme, and I created the opposite message. But here's the thing. If you don't first, to me, and self-esteem has always been a big thing for me because I, I literally didn't have any, zero. Like I was at the bottom. It affects every aspect of your life, truly. It affects your ability to succeed or not, your ability to have relationships, good relationships, healthy ones, um, the ability to keep a job or to not. It truly and it 100% affects your spirituality because you have got to learn that you are an infinite part of source. You have to learn that. But in order to really learn that and really embrace that, you have to love yourself. So for me, self-esteem affects every aspect of somebody's life. And that is why it's so important to me. That's why that's what I teach. If you can start to realize that you are important, that you're worthy, that you have value, then you will be able to connect to source. It's not like you can't connect before, but it's a whole different relationship, right? Yeah, yeah. So how did the sort of like, because obviously you said your mum took you to um, uh, sort of like spiritual stuff when, when you were a child, did you sort of like through all those years until you left your marriage, did you actually tap into any of that at all? Or did you just kind of like, no, that was, that was there and that's nothing that I'm not, I'm going to go into. So it's something that um, later in years I found it actually runs on both sides of my family. Um, so I was actually born this way and people will say to me, you know, like, don't you have any hard feelings towards your dad or, or what? And no, I don't because being in an abusive environment is psychic ability 101. Now I'm not saying it's a requirement to be psychic. However, when you are in that environment, you have to judge from a distance what's going to happen, right? I had to always kind of stop and listen inside and judge, okay, like, is somebody mad? Is somebody not mad? That is psychic ability training. Yeah. Now, <laughs> I would have liked it to happen a different way, but for <laughs> me, that's how it happened for me, Yeah. right? Um, same thing like with my husband. So when I, right after, I remember right after I was, uh, forced to get married and living in this apartment with him and I had made dinner, which I laugh now because I really didn't even know how to make dinner. Um, but I had made extra and he come home and he brought a friend and he said to me, why did you make extra food? And I said, I don't know. I just knew you were bringing somebody home. So I was using it. I just didn't know what it was. I had had it. And then when I got the divorce and I started looking for inner peace, um, my mom took me, there used to be out here. Well, I guess they still exist, but it was called the mind, body, spirit festival. Okay. Ginormous festival, right? And she would take me and she bought me my first set of tarot cards. Um, and I started reading people. I didn't even know or even really believe that I had the ability. But I just started reading people and they kept were coming back to me and saying everything you said was true. I was like, oh, OK, you know, um, and the mediumship is something that actually just happened to me one day. I didn't know I was a medium. Um, I What I did was uh, while I was raising my girls and going to school, I had my own uh, house cleaning business. I cleaned houses so I could manipulate my schedule. 
and I was getting out of the business because I was tired of cleaning other people's toilets. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I, I can tired. understand that. I had reached the point where I was like, okay, I'm done with this. But I had got this new uh, house from a referral, and um, but I was getting out of the business. So I said to myself, well, I'll go do the house. I'll just leave her a note, let her know. I can't continue. I'm getting a different job. And I was in her bedroom. I was cleaning her bedroom. And um, somebody came up from behind me and wrapped their arms around me and grabbed me. And I just froze. And I was like, I'm just here to clean the house. And then I was like, I'm talking to the air. What am I doing? And that soul ended up following me all the way through the house. And I kept getting like these images and these pictures and dates and all the way through the house. And I, and I, re I still remember I went to leave the house and I put my foot on the step to go out. And I said, if he follows me for two weeks, I'll call her. And sure enough, he followed me for two weeks. <laughs> And I called her and I, I asked her, I said, is your husband on the other side? And she said, yes, he just died. And then I said, do you have an anniversary or birthday coming up? And she didn't answer me. So I thought, I have lost it. I have lost my mind. I am crazy. And I asked her again and she said, April, they're both coming up. And I said, I think I'm supposed to give you a reading. And she said, well, how do you do that? I said, I don't know. I've never done one. So I ended up doing that and I gave her a bunch of dates and um, pictures. And he, uh, he kept showing me this really weird flower. Um, and it turns out that she got married in Japan. That's why the flower was weird. I had never seen the flower before. Ah. Um, and then actually what I found out later, because she was referred to me through my mom's friend, um, she was actually contemplating suicide. Oh, wow. But because I came to her, she was not now. So that's how I found out I was a medium. A powerful way of finding out. Yeah. <laughs> yes, that was very interesting. So both abilities are just naturally there. They're just something I naturally have. Um, but I do believe that the more that you realize that you are a part of source and that you have infinite worth and that you have infinite love that it helps because really you you know being connected to source is how you do these abilities it's how you get the information how you know and, and the more that you love yourself the more you become an open channel to source yeah for me yeah, be beautifully said, and and it, and it is. Um, and as you said, you know, it's one. I've always found myself as well. It's one of the hardest thing for people to actually say that they love themselves. Mm -hmm. It's 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 it, it's just one of those things. And and yeah, you you think you know, we're born for love, to be love. We are love, but we that just kind of like gets kind of like stripped away. Mm -hmm. um, as soon as soon as we we come in, in into the into this world, so um, obviously when you work with your clients, do you ever sort of like does anyone ever sort of like speak to you about children and children's self esteem and how they can help build children's self esteem up, or is it mainly just adults? I I work with mostly adults, um, but there are some that you know they have children and. We will talk about that. The main thing is, is we don't, it's, we don't realize how important our words are, how important the things that we say to children are. Um, so for example, like in my situation, um, growing up, my brother didn't make it. My brother committed suicide. So people will say, how did you make it? And he didn't. Well, one of the things that happened was I had other people that my brother didn't have. So I had aunts that would take me, 
um, and I had a grandma uh, before she died that would take me. And those people would tell me, oh, you know, you're pretty. Oh, you know, you're smart. So the studies actually show that if the child has someone in their life, just anyone, it can be a neighbor, it could be a coach at school that says, you know, you can do it. You know, you're smart. You know, you're talented. That is where we get the concept of what's called the resilient kid. It's the kid that makes it out that shouldn't make it out. So that's one thing. Um, the other thing is teaching children to really, we need to teach them to make their own determination of who they are and not seek the opinion of others, not to seek the approval of others. We are taught to seek the approval of others, uh, especially in our school system. You know, who gets the highest score? Who gets the best grade? That kind of thing. Uh, we're also taught to seek the approval of our parents. Now, there's a fine line with this where you do want to have respect as a person, but you don't actually need their approval to be okay. So when you teach children to think for themselves and to decide their own worth and not seek the approval of others, then they can learn to, that they have their own inner worth, their own love. It's their, so here's the thing. It's kind of like the mom who does this. I can tell my child all day, oh, you're so smart, you're so pretty, you're so this, you're so that. But if the child doesn't believe it, it doesn't matter. Right? It doesn't matter who approves of you if you do not approve of you. So your opinion is actually the most important one. And that's what we have to teach people. And that's what I teach people is I have people that they're afraid to go to Walmart. There's a big store here. There's a Walmart, right? Because somebody else is going to judge them. And I have to say to them, do you, do you know that person? No. Do you think you'll ever see them again? No. Are they coming home with you? No. Why does their opinion matter? Right? It, they're, but we are so afraid of the judgment of others. We're so looking for that approval and caring about other people's opinions. So that is another thing that is very crucial to teach is not to seek the approval of others. Yeah. Beautifully said, and and it is, um, you know, it's so important the way we we talk to children and how we work with children, especially in today's age, with so much that's going on in in the world and everything. We we kind of really do need to be really aware of of what of, of what we say to children, but also think to other people as well. Mm -hmm. um, it, you know, it's it's so important to actually think about the words we use, how we say them. Um, you know, what, what's it around? Um, they normally say, you know, if you're going to yell at somebody, you know, take, stop for 10 seconds mm -hmm. and, yeah. and, ju and just see. And I, and I think we have to do that with everything we do, with every interaction we do with, with people be, because, because you can still affect, you know, even if they've kind of like got through a lot of stuff as an adult, that one word or a couple of words could literally, you know, cause some issues. Mm -hmm. So the way that I look at that is, um, again, like when I wanted inner peace, so I came from, you know, my dad was very angry and I was actually, my mother actually gave me and my brother up to my father. So I was raised by my father and then I would see my mom, but my mom was very angry, but in a different way. So they were both very angry, but it was very different ways. Um, and when I was seeking that internal peace, the conclusion I came to was, I don't want to be angry because I don't like how that feels. And me changing that is actually an act of self-love that then vibrates out to others. So 
at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who you're going to bed with. It can be you, your partner, your cat, doesn't matter. You are still going to bed with you. And at the end of the day, I wanted to be able to be okay with me. So in order to do that, I had to be a different way. I had to not be angry, be upset, not say those things, not react in those ways. First, you choose how you want to be, then the behavior follows. And when I change the way I'm being, I get to go to bed at night and think, okay, I did good or I did better. That is an act of self-love that actually then benefits those around you. But the goal isn't to benefit those around you. The goal is to benefit yourself in an act of self-love that then spreads out. Beautiful. Um, something that um, hopefully everyone watching this will, will actually remember um from from your words now as you know i do guided meditations and angelical card readings so each week i like to ask my guests what they would like me to do for themselves and those watching so april would you like me to pull an angelical card or would you like me to do a mini guided meditation oh we can talk to some angels let's do let's do a card reading then why not and funny enough, I had my cards there all the time. <laughs> Amazing that, as anyone will know. Um, so when I do the cards, I do the cards for what you need to know for your highest good at this moment in time. So although I work with the past, um, when I work with the past, it's to bring people to the present. Though I take people to the future, it's so they can work out from the future and come back to the present. So what does April and everyone who's watching this need to know for their highest good at this moment in time Ooh, okay okay one beautiful so we have got rainbow blessings blessings are sharing your life so beautiful um confirmation um for you april and everyone watching you know that there are rainbow blessings at the moment you know blessings are sharing your life um you know you just have to look and see that rainbow within within the clouds and the doom and it also ties in with what we've been talking about with mm -hmm. the self-esteem as well which is why i always love the way these cards always come out they always resonate with what we've been talking about um as well which is which is absolutely you know um amazing on you know on that um you know know that you you know you are loved you are worthy there are blessings there you have to look for it and when you see that rainbow you the world just lights up the magic is there it's it's all it's all there for you um so yeah so i look forward to all the stuff that's coming into your life april Yes, me too. It's, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be absolutely brilliant. I really like. I really like that card, especially the little, the little flowers that are growing up. Mm -hmm. yeah. Also, I, I like rainbows as well. That's one of my yeah. favorite. One of my favorite things. Um, so, April, do you have any insights or thoughts to leave our viewers? Any last words of wisdom? The, the main message that. It I want everybody to hear and to understand is that you have infinite worth. It is innate. You have it just because. And you don't have to do anything to be worthy. You are already worthy. Your worth is innate. It comes from source. You are part of source. It's natural to accept that. And to tell yourself that every chance you get, I'm worthy. I'm worthy. That is the main thing that I want everybody to know. Oh, that's beautiful. Thank you so, so much for that. Um, so I hope everyone, you've enjoyed this conversation, found it insightful, because I know I definitely have. So if people want to connect with you, April, how do they do that? Uh, actually, Facebook is the best way to get a hold of me. It's the fastest way to get a hold of me. Um, so uh, Messenger on Facebook or uh, either, like I have a Facebook page. Um, but that is the fastest way. Yeah. What's your Facebook page called? 
It's called Soul Essentials Healing. Nice. I like yeah. it. Yeah. And, that, and what I'll do is I'll put the link to that um, and to uh, April has also got Instagram, YouTube, email, mm -hmm. website. So I'll also put all those details um, on there as well for, for people, but mainly the Facebook one will be the main one as that's how um, we can, you can contact April um, and, uh, and speak and connect to her if you, if you so, so feel um, cool to. Um, so thank you so much, April, for sharing your your wisdom. And a quick question, do you actually obviously do soul essential healing, um, but do you actually do tarot readings for people and mediumship mm -hmm. for people separate to, to, to the other work you do, or is it just all, all yeah. joined in one? Nope. I have a day job still. I work as a professional mental health and substance abuse counselor for my day job. And then um, this business, I've, I've actually had this business for over 20 years. So I use tarot cards. However, I don't need them. They're more like a cheat sheet for me. Yeah. Um, but I also do, uh, I do those readings and I do, it's multidimensional energy healing is what it is. So yes. Yeah, we like multidimensional stuff. As everyone knows, I love my multidimensional stuff. Um, yeah. but, but they're conversations for other days. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely, because um, they could go on forever. Um, so thank you, everyone, for watching. And again, thank you, April. And of course, if you're now ready to remember your divine presence, step onto your spiritual multidimensional path, but you feel lost, confused, stuck or alone, then please feel free to connect with me and we can see where you are now and how you can move forward to actually take charge of your destiny so you can spread your wings and soar. And you can get a free future life progression recording um, that takes you into future lifetime to gain insights you need to know and some other free gifts if you want to sign up to my weekly newsletter. So again, thank you everyone so much for watching and I'd like to invite you to share this video as I'm sure there are more people who feel lost and want to get clear on their destiny just like you and improve their self-esteem. And of course, if you're watching this on YouTube, then please feel free to subscribe and hit that bell button to be notified when the show goes live or I post new guide meditations. It's every subscription, every like, every comment really, really does help. Um, get the messages of myself and my guests out to everyone to help inspire um, and grow this beautiful community in the world where we have self-esteem and we love not just our, um, each other, but we love ourselves as well. And I look forward to you all joining me same time, same place next week. Take care. Bye.